Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Hello there. It's been torturously slow in coming, but we are now at last getting to see the government's EU wish list, its demands in the renegotiation of our membership. George Osborne has been in Berlin letting the Germans in on the secret. He said Britain wants to not be part of an ever closer union and we want Europe to have less red tape and be more competitive. But his main focus was on the need to protect non-users of the euro, like Britain, from the consequences of the single currency and all that follows from it like a banking union or further bailouts. So here's the deal for the Eurozone as he sees it. You get a Eurozone that works better. We get a guarantee that Eurozone decisions and costs are not imposed on us. You get a stronger Euro. We make sure the voice of the pound is heard when it should be. A deal that is written into law, a deal that is good for Britain, and a deal that is good for Germany too. So the broad outline of the negotiation is becoming clear or clearer, but there is one item on that wish list that the Chancellor barely mentioned today, perhaps because it has proved too sticky. Migration and benefits in particular. The government would love to be able to tell the British people that EU migrants can no longer come here and get their wages topped up through tax credits, at least immediately. Tax credits look like a migration subsidy. But our political editor, Allegra Stratton, has learned that the Cabinet Secretary has warned David Cameron that he's unlikely uh, to get the four-year ban on migrant benefits that he's seeking. It's nearly three years since the Prime Minister announced he'd renegotiate Britain's relationship with Europe, and the time has nearly come to harvest whatever powers he thinks he can get back. Next week, his demands will be released. Some easier than others, the low-hanging fruit, others tucked very high up out of reach. Today, the Chancellor was talking very tough in Berlin. We want Britain to remain in a reformed European Union, but it needs to be a European Union that works better for all of the citizens of Europe and works better for Britain too. So which fruit will drop easily? The Chancellor today demanded protections for non-Euro countries like Britain. That demand could fall into place, but others could go less well. The fruit drooping off the low boughs. What the government is definitely going to get includes an opt-out on ever closer union, and so too the liberalising of the single market. But next up is the concept of a group national parliament veto. Moderately hard, but they could get this. And then George Osborne's topic today, a multi-currency union, this is tougher still, but the hardest of all is what benefits new migrants should get. The most important demand from Downing Street is that any EU citizen coming to the UK shouldn't be able to claim benefits unless he or she has lived here for four years. They made that demand as they see it as a much more moderate request than their initial idea, which was to have quotas or numerical limits on EU migrants coming into the UK. Under pressure from Angela Merkel, the Prime Minister backed down on that and came up with this four-year demand instead. The trouble is it's illegal because it would discriminate against uh, EU citizens on the basis of their nationality. It would give a better deal to Brits than to people from other EU countries. So it's illegal under EU treaties. Newsnight understands that Britain's top civil servant, Jeremy Hayward, has told Cabinet colleagues that they are unlikely to get back much more than a tax credit ban lasting a few weeks or months. He is supposed to see that they have three options. The first, treaty change. It's unlikely in the time frame and even in the fullness of time, Poland would probably reject this on welfare. So the second option is parity. Parity between EU migrants and British citizens. But in the words of one source, this would go down like a bucket of cold six. So the third option is that there would be a ban on tax credits for new EU migrants. It just it wouldn't last very long. A few weeks, maybe months. The legal experts say if you go for, say, a one- or two-year residency qualification, it's not much better than four years. It still could be seen as indirectly discriminatory. However, when you go down to months rather than years, it'd be much easier to get away with, and I don't think the British would have too much of a problem in enacting that kind of uh, rule. 
problem is that for many people who see EU migration as the central problem to be solved, this will leave a sour taste in their mouths. If David Cameron comes back with a ban of less than a year or two, he's going to have a very hard time selling that to the British public, and it may even lead to people voting out. Uh, and the bigger question is, are countries such as Poland, Germany, willing to see the UK leave the EU uh, just on this issue of a year here or there on benefits claims? It would be challenged in the courts, wouldn't it? It could very well be challenged, but in the EU, if you have a strong political agreement, uh, it's going to be very hard for the ECJ to overrule that political agreement. And if it's enshrined in law, then it should be fine. One way to lessen the chances of a legal challenge is to do it by a residency test. But even so, some at the top of government are still braced for a battle in the courts. One source says there's also some strategy in this. Imagine that any welfare changes do end up being challenged in the courts. Imagine that court case goes on till 2019 or 2020. By that point, the rest of the EU may be ready to do proper treaty change. And that, they say, would be the moment when Britain would get more back on welfare. A dramatic reveal of the Prime Minister's demands in some 10 days' time. It's expected he'll still reach for the shiniest of all, the ban for four years on tax credits for new migrants. It's just behind the scenes. They're worried this policy may not stay intact. Allegra Stratton there. Well, the issue is a bit thorny, clearly. Asking Europe to amend cherished principles won't wash. But the PM has pressures in his own party. This could be intractable there. I'm joined by John Redwood, former cabinet minister. He's a member of Conservatives for Britain which wants fundamental reforms of the EU or else. Also with me, Jonathan Portes, former chief economist at the uh, Department for Work and Pensions and now senior fellow of the ESRC Britain in a Changing Europe programme. Uh, evening, gents. Look, first of all, um, is benefit tourism a significant problem, Jonathan? Uh, no. And in fact, the European Commission actually asked the British government to submit any evidence it had that uh, benefit tourism was a significant problem. And the British government said, actually, we don't have any quantitative evidence. What quantitative evidence there is, what data we actually have, suggests that actually relatively few EU migrants do claim tax credits very soon after coming. It's true a lot mm. of EU migrants do work in relatively low paid jobs and they do get tax credits, but it's not usually till they've been here several years, after which they of course have paid in right. just as much as the rest of us. Do you see it as a problem, John Redwood? I think the public sees it as a very big problem and it's not just the, the narrow benefits, it's certainly not just out of work benefits, it is the in work top up benefits, it's also school places and hospital right. uh, um, capacity and so forth which people are very worried about and that is why the Conservatives wisely in my view stood on an election pledge to get migration down by a very substantial amount from over 300,000 a year to under 100,000 a year and to do that we do think the Prime Minister was right to say in his Bloomberg speech we need fundamental change of our relationship with the EU because we don't see how we honour the pledge which the public want without changing the way we relate to the EU. Did, did you, do you see it as a problem though or is it that the public see it as a problem so you see it as a problem? I, I, I wasn't sure whether you actually accepted Jonathan's view that it isn't a problem but there's a perception there so you must be seen to respond to it. Is yes that? I think it can be a problem. I think the public are right to worry about it because we're, we're getting too many people uh, we're having to skew our migration in favour of Europe against the Commonwealth areas where we perhaps have longer and stronger cultural and historical ties. Benefits in particular though? Or? Well, I think benefits is part of it right. because it means that um, the state, other taxpayers, have to subsidise people's employment in relatively low paid jobs and those jobs might be better for someone who's already right. here. Uh, and why should we have to pay that money? Right. OK, well, let, let's go on to another one, which is, will we be able to reform the rules in this renegotiation? Jonathan, what is your impression as to whether we can get some kind of reform here? Um, well, I think it's likely we may be able to get some delay. But the idea that EU citizens who've come here have been working for three years, say, should not be able to get tax credits, whereas somebody who's... Remember, there's no residence or contribution qualifications for British citizens, for people like you or me. Right. Um, so anybody, who, even if they've been unemployed for five years, not been paying anything in, who's British would be able to get tax credits right away, but EU citizens, even if they've been paid in for three years, won't. That would pretty clearly be discriminatory. So I think the idea that you could have this delay of three or four years without any sort of economic or rational or even fairness justification, I think probably is pushing it. Are you equally pessimistic that this is going to be achievable in the renegotiation, a four-year ban, a, a delay, for example? 
Yes, I think it's very difficult and I don't think it's sufficient. I mean, I think in order to meet the promises we've made on migration, you have to do more than that. And what British people want, by, by and large, is for the British government to be able to make fair decisions over how many people to invite in, who they should be and where they should come from, and not to discriminate all the time in favour of the EU, and then to be able to make sensible rules about who is entitled to what benefits. And the reason people who have been settled here all their lives get priority is because their families have paid in and, and they are right. part of our community. We don't think it's right that somebody should turn up and the next day uh, the neighbours who have been paying taxes for years should have to pay more tax. Jonathan, could we change the benefit system? Because a lot of European countries say you're quite free to change your benefit system to, for example, to like use national insurance records or something. And then as long as you're not discriminating against the, the foreigner, it's, it's fine. It would... uh, absolutely. Of course we could. We could abolish the tax credit system tomorrow. And of course, George Osborne is indeed proposing to cut four and a half billion pounds from the tax credit system already. So that will affect EU migrants just as it will affect British citizens. Actually, the irony about what George Osborne was preparing to do is he's cutting tax credits, which aren't really why EU migrants come here. At the same time, he's raising the minimum wage quite a lot. Actually, the minimum wage and the fact that people can come here and work very easily is the reason they're coming here. So actually, paradoxically, the changes that George Osborne announced in the last budget, raising the minimum wage and cutting tax credits, although they weren't intended to, will actually make our, our system rather more rather than less attractive for EU migrants. Interesting. Um, John Redwood, I mean, it's pretty clear, though, that if the government got everything it wanted that it's asking for along the lines of benefits and migration, you still are going to vote out, aren't you? Well, what I want, and what a lot of my friends and colleagues want, is something very simple. We think that if the British people want change, want something, and they vote for it in an election, their government should be able to deliver it. So yes, I want to restore British democracy. And having a short shopping list of two or three things that annoy people at the moment is not the whole answer. I want a new relationship, I want that fundamental change. So the really interesting thing is you both, although completely opposite ends of the argument here, you kind of agree that what the government is focusing on is not really the point, not for you, and it isn't the point for you. I mean, I, you know, we just have to choose, really, between your vision or your vision, and this is just an argument over... Well, I don't nothing. have any particular view whether we should stay in or get out on the overall question, but I agree with John that this is essentially side to the sort of issues that John actually is focusing on, which is what is the proper relationship between the Eurozone ins and outs on things like the single market and financial regulation. Those are the big questions, and whether we get a deal that is in the UK's interest on those issues is far more important than this essentially sideshow about benefit tourism. And the Chancellor did warn in his speech, quite rightly, that you can't take their word, because he had their word on not involving us in putting our money into bailouts for the euro, and then, of course, they went ahead and said he had to bail out Greece after all. So it does show that you need fundamental change, and it has to be nailed down in treaty. Plenty more time to discuss this before the referendum. Thanks both very much indeed. I've been